Uh, hi, I'm Lydell. I'm uh, part of IPFS Stewards Group at Protocol Labs. Um, and this talk will be a bit different. We've been talking about Project RIA and uh, big gateways. I'll be talking about taking uh, tools and specs and libraries we've built uh, and continue building for the Project RIA and using that for self-hosting. Uh, so I started this talk uh, with one slide and I was like thinking, could I uh, just stop here and then talk for 30 minutes and then I realized there's no point in showing people, I mean if you don't have time, that's the gist of the talk, but then um, you don't understand how important self-hosting is without some con historical context. So the majority of this talk will be uh, talking about what gateways are, what types of gateway we have, what types of gateway functionalities exist on IPFSIO and the web.link gateways. Those are public gateways uh, provided by Protocol Labs. And then what's the future of that specific infrastructure, what type of services we are building to enable that, and then we'll zoom in to the Bifrost gateway, which is the first uh, element of those services. And at the end, with that knowledge, we'll quickly go over how to do self-hosting, and there will be a fake demo which will work. So, what IPFS is, uh, that's a question we don't want to answer, and uh, the lowest common denominator that we all agreed on was that, oh, yeah, we work with CIDs, and we use them for operations like retrieval, uh, in the case of gateways. Um, and to say this is like IPFS implementation, you need to actually verify the data uh, you are making operations with um, is matching the CID. So what, gateways, uh, what Gateway is, it's IPFS implementation itself. It works with CIDs, it verifies them, and then uh, returns the, some sort of a representation to the client. And the client itself could be still doing IPFS if it's using trustless gateways um, and verifying hashes, or it does just regular HTTP. It no longer does IPFS. It's working with data that was loaded through IPFS, but then it delegates trust to the gateway. Um, and just maybe like other framing is that uh, the difference between trustless and trusted responses. If I want to load the cut picture, from some subdirectory under some uh, CID uh, root. If I'm using trusted uh, responses in the browser, I want the thing to render, I'm delegating trust to the gateway. I ask gateway for that path and I get the bytes. They most likely are the cut, but it, the gateway could lie and they return something else. The trustless response is that I get all the blocks for entire path. Not only for all the blocks, entire DAG for the cut, but I also get blocks for the parent directory and the top level CID. And we need all the blocks because I don't know what's the CID of CID directory or a cut. I need to learn that from the parent and I only have the top level parent CID. So with that in mind, uh, like the trusted responses are extremely important uh, because that's how uh, the most prolific uh, runtime on the planet works in web browsers. And th there's nothing wrong with uh, using trustled, uh, trusted responses as long as you trust the gateway. And like depends on a person. Uh, I personally only trust the gateway that I run on my own machine on the local host. And you can see this is a Wikipedia mirror loaded from uh, my local machine. Um, and it renders in the browser. It's like the verification happened still on my, bra uh, on my machine, but it uh, returned the serialized uh, data to the browser, the browser rendered that. And that's how Brave works with uh, a bit better UX. Um, and now, uh, year after the last IPFS thing, we no longer, uh, we not only have uh, just fi the serialized files, we also can request the serialized uh, arbitrary IPLD data model objects, as DAG JSON or DAG Cibor, uh, we can all, you can also like fetch uh, the arbitrary directory trees uh, of Unix FS as a tar stream. Um, that was uh, recently uh, that recently shipped. Um, and what changed since this last IPFS thing when I talked about gateways is the trustless verifiable responses are now possible end to end. We not only have them; we had them for 
blocks and cars, but now, uh, since Kubo 19, uh, it's possible also to request a signed IPNS record uh, from the gateway and verify it on the client. And that gives us, if you are using IPNS uh, records with cryptographic identifiers, you get end-to-end -end, uh, verifiability across both immutable and mutable namespace, as long as you don't use the Um Okay, so with that in mind, uh, how gateways at, on IPFSIO and dweb.link work today? Um, it's Kubo based. <laughs> um, so this is a very simplified way of looking at the gateway at IPFSIO. Um, both IPFSIO and dweb.link are hosted by on the same infrastructure. The difference is the host header. Uh, so you can see at the very bottom of, of the left uh, side the subdomain on dweb.link. The only difference is that the requests have uh, CID in the host header. Uh, the gateways are very powerful and they support multiple re re requests and response types. The, some are trusted, some are trustless, some are more or less expensive. But at the end of the day, uh, the request goes through our load balancers and uh, TLS termination, and there's a re get request for a specific content path. And all that goes to the Kubo, Kubo's, multiple Kubo instances, and then Kubo either has the data in the local block store, or it will reach out to the uh, IPFS swarm uh, to retrieve that data. Um, and that's a lot of work, and it's also a lot of challenges when it comes to scaling, um, adjusting costs. Uh, by the fact that uh, both HTTP, purely HTTP interface is on the left side, um, we are tempted to use HTTP scaling uh, tools and best practices for scaling Kubo. At the same time, on the right side, we have peer-to-peer -peer protocols which are not HTTP, mainly BitSwap. Majority of IPFS peers use BitSwap, and that uh, poses challenges around uh, scaling and trading costs. So often you have um, provider, you, you are able to like deploy and optimize costs around HTTP. Um, as long as we don't use other protocols. Here we are joined at the hip and we may have a, a good opportunity to reduce costs around HTTP, but at the same time, we don't really control how much cost will be eaten by BitSwap. Often those two services could be potentially scaled to be like less expensive, uh, even if we had like two services instead of one. Um, so that's the direction we are moving uh, into uh, towards compassable services. So Project RIA uh, is an example of that, and we are using that as an opportunity to uh, split Kubo into the, those separate services. So you can see in the place where we had Kubo and the Swarm, now we have Bifrost Gateway, which the rest of the, the stock will be about, and then the Bifrost Gateway on both ends speaks HTTP. So that's very important. Uh, Takeaway from this talk is that the, the only thing you need to worry when it comes to Bifrost Gateway is how to manage uh, HTTP service, how to scale it. And there's like a lot of people with expertise around that, a lot of services, very cost-effective services uh, for you know, optimizing caching on both ends. You can pull, put a load balancer, HTTP cache solutions on both ends because you may be uh, optimizing for uh, content path uh, caching, or you may also uh, want to uh, leverage frequency of request, uh, caching uh, requests for popular blocks. And then the blocks are fetched from some uh, trustless uh, gateway. In this case, it's Saturn. And then content routing uh, responsibilities, the data transfer are on the right side. And like the project RIA is still work in progress. And in general, the idea is that the data will slowly trickle down towards the Bifrost gateway. Um, and we are still trying to understand what's happening there. But uh, in general, we are trying to avoid cycles like that. Uh, <laughs> but um, maybe like just to zoom in uh, into the right side of the thing, um, you can see at the top, there's a Kubo, which did all the things. And on the bottom, we got uh, Bifrost gateway which uh, takes over some responsibilities, 
while other responsibilities are moved down to the right. So for example, uh, the request for the HTTP content path is still handled by the, the service. It's actually using the same code uh, as Kubo because we extracted the gateway code into box or slash gateway uh, library. Um, so there's a, no, uh, the, the, the risk of uh, divergence is very low because we have multiple compliance test suite. We are growing that. There's a talk later today, I, I believe, or later, yeah, uh, by Piotr about uh, gateway compliance test suite. Uh, both Kubo and Ga uh, Bifrost gateway run the same tests. Um, and the CID and DAG verification and the serial, optional deserialization also happens on Bifrost gateway. But then the data transfer responsibilities, this like the biggest, the fattest arrow, uh, now is moved to the trustless gateway, which in Project RIA is Saturn CDN, but as you will see later in this talk, it could be something else. Um, and content routing is pushed even further uh, beyond uh, even that uh, trustless gateway, because you may have like a multiple points of, pre you, you, you may want to scale all those boxes here are just like a single box, but in reality, those are like multiple machines, and they may require different strategies for scaling. So um, running the same, like uh, running content routing for the same, the most popular CID over and over again, traversing DHT, in the case when you effectively have a single uh, gateway product like IPFSIO, it's not very cost effective. And by introducing a caching layer in form of uh, IPNI in front of DHT um, and sharing that across all the trustless gateway instances, we do that resolution only once and then subsequent requests don't need to wait for DHT uh, uh, results. So we have additional, we have essentially like layers of proxy in front of uh, the thing that we had in the past. The trustless gateway takes, takes care of retrieval and it pro provides caching for that. And IPNI, I would argue, provides the se similar type of caching, but for content routing results. Um, and the difference here is also now we can use the best blog DAG transfer protocol for retrieving data from peers. Those could be Kubo nodes, but it could be also like Elastic IPFS. It could be something else. It could be IRO with the new uh, novel transfer protocol. Uh, the, the backend, which is no longer part of Bifrost Gateway, can take care of retrieval. Um, and finally, uh, going back to the Bifrost uh, Gateway itself. So we are like zooming into the very first uh, block on this infrastructure. Um, the Bifrost Gateway as a project has, uh, cer like, we made the cent cer certain design decisions and identified responsibilities which, which responsibilities should be local and which ones should be delegated. Uh, so nam namely the, the, main design, uh, the main design decision was to not have peer-to-peer -peer stack, which may be controversial, but at the same time, you can still have that peer-to-peer -peer stack. You just run it on a separate, on a, as a separate service, uh, you, which you can scale independently. So uh, what's local? Essentially, HTTP daemon provides HTTP services. It's responsible for verifying uh, that blocks the data that it processes, matches CID. And effectively, the only API that we are committed to supporting in this project are the official uh, HTTP gateway specs. And we use that using the reference implementation in Boxer Gateway library. And to do that, uh, uh, we also support uh, mutable namespaces for DNS link and IPNS. For that, we, we reuse namespaces from uh, Boxer as well. And we have a minimal set of IPLD for the most popular types of data uh, in the wild. Uh, and probably we'll evolve that approach. Um, but for now, that's UnixFS, some web things, which I'll describe later, and um, some uh, Daxibor uh, support. And then content routing, we have IPIP, and there are other IPIPs uh, to delegate even more content routing needs. Uh, is delegated to the routing uh, v1 API, which is provided by uh, um, IPNI. And the data transfer storage, that's provided by some trustless gateway spec. In Project RIA, that's Saturn. So I tried to draw the boxes 
that are inside of uh, Bifrost Gateway. Um, and then I realized probably in a month or two, those boxes will be different. We'll probably re rename them uh, and that this talk will be useless. So maybe I, I created a, a, a responsibility map, which is not a dead architectural design. It's more about things that Bifrost Gateway has to do to do its job. So you can see the, the biggest one, the, probably the most complexity is around resolving content paths because we have a request for a specific file on some path and we need to know how to traverse that. If it's mutable, we need resolve it through namesis. If it's DNS link, maybe it's ENS. Um, if it's, uh, uh, is it a single block or is it a directory? Uh, going through InxFS or maybe going through IPLD data model. Uh, that, you would think that's the end, but no. When it comes to the gateway, we also have things around web. And those things are, if I open a directory, it's not a file, the gateway needs to generate, if it's a request comes from a browser, it needs to generate HTML directory listing. If there is a special CID or maybe DNS link name in the host header, I also need to normalize that and update the content path. If I request a directory and there's index HTML, I return index HTML because that's how most of websites work. If there's HTTP range request, I don't want to fetch entire Wikipedia uh, uh, archive, which is 80 gigabytes, I want a specific sliver of that. Uh, and finally, like, how do I handle things like redirects? So all those things are provided by Boxel library, but I mention it here because a, a, a majority of the work happened here. It lives in a Boxel gateway, but it was part of this project to extract it and make it generic enough. And then this purple thing uh, on the right bottom it's effectively the interface pro that the Boxo gateway requires uh, Bifrost gateway to implement. And we have two implementations. The, the default is the block backend, which will fetch things block by block. Um, but we are working on graph uh, backend, which will reduce the number of round trips. Uh, the greenish uh, branches are how we handle storage. There's no physical storage in uh, Bifrost Gateway. We have in-memory ephemeral cache. And then we have exchange backend, which is responsible for fetching blocks or bugs of blocks, either using a single HTTP request for a specific single uh, gateway, or in case of Saturn, we have Caboose, which I believe the talk is right after mine. Um, so uh, you will hear more about that. So Caboose is what we use for graph backend uh, uh, experimentation in Project Saturn. Um, but for now, if you run the, uh, the default settings, that will be block uh, backend uh, with plain HTTP fetch. And finally, a lot of work went into adding instrumentation around uh, metrics and telemetry. And I have slides about that later, so. Um, maybe like going from this, if you want to have uh, What's the most important part of this? I think that the most important part is that the, the Bifrost Gateway, if you would want to like summarize it in one sentence, it's like a, a verifier service uh, of an untrusted remote uh, block store. Uh, everything else is like implementation detail. You may, you may not want to use the serialized responses and you want, may want to request block by block, or maybe you want to request a car stream and you only have a block store which supports block by block, and you don't want to pay uh, the verification cost on the client, the Bifrost Gateway will act as a verifier for you. Uh, and finally, that's where we get uh, to the self-hosting. Um, the self-hosting today, I think th this is the first slide, right? Uh, we provide uh, Docker images for uh, Intel, uh, Intel architecture and ARM, so you can run it on Raspberry Pi. Uh, there are tags for releases, and there are also like developer builds for every uh, stable commit in the main branch. And I suggest using the main la latest for now because it's a very early, uh, early uh, preview of this project. How the project looks like: uh, you run uh, Bifrost Gateway, and you configure it by passing a configure environment variables. And the only one that you actually need to pass is the URL of the block store. In this case, I'm using something untrusted 
uh, Bifrost Gateway will start and it will expose uh, a trusted uh, endpoint which will return you a verified responses. Uh, all the response types that currently are supported on IPFSIO, uh, those response types are supported here as well and you got some test links that you can click uh, to verify it works as expected. Uh, yeah, so there's a demo which I totally pre-recorded using, <laughs> using screenshot tool. Um, so I run uh, by the latest uh, Bifrost Gateway um, build against IPFSIO uh, because IPFSIO supports trustless responses. Um, and I click the very first uh, smoke test link for a single JPEG. And that's a good test because it, it's, a single uh, it's a small file, so it's a single block. There are no paths. So I effectively should, it should translate to a request for a single block. And that's what you see on the last line. Uh, the request to the local gateway got translated to a raw block request to the gateway, a uh, remote gateway. The hash was verified and then the response, the serialist response was returned uh, and loaded in my browser. Um, yeah, so it's local verifier of remote untrusted gateway and it goes beyond uh, immutable uh, identifiers because uh, one of the, uh, the second example is a Wikipedia mirror, which is a very good test case. Uh, it has both DNS link, a mutable pointer. It also has a very huge directory, which has 20 million of files, and there's an index HTML inside. So if you did not opt uh, implement things correctly, it will not load immediately, right? Um, so it takes care of resolution, it takes care of verification, and then it takes care of deserialization. And at the end, you end up with uh, a gateway on their local host machine. Um, and finally, for, um, for people who want to start thinking about running this, it's very, very easy. For self-hosting, you have a very small set of things that you want to uh, adjust. Aside from the endpoint URL, you may want to adjust the size of the in-memory block cache. Uh, you may experiment with the uh, graph backend, but right now it's not uh, it, it's not supported on the public gateways yet, and we, we are still writing the specification for it. So uh, I think self-hosting and uh, uh, sections related to testing, tracing, and self-diagnosing are the most important ones. Uh, if you are interested in Saturn CDN, um, and there will be a talk about Caboose uh, after this one, uh, there are, there's built-in support for Caboose. And you can opt in by using a Saturn Orchestrator URL instead of a proxy. Um, and that will switch the backend into, uh, to the caboose. Um, so how to think about self-hosting? Well, one way of thinking this is if you already run Kubo in your gateway infrastructure, you probably want to split Kubo uh, and keep Kubo. <laughs> you essentially add the Bifrost gateway in front of Kubo Kubo no longer provides the gateway functionality. Uh, it provides a trustless uh, block store. Um, and uh, you scale Bifrost gateway in front of Kubo. You can introduce caching layer in between them. Uh, and I think it's a nice property uh, being able to uh, slowly migrate uh, your infrastructure from this old Kubo only uh, setup into uh, the new one. When you, you int maybe you introduce the Bifrost gateway as the first service. And then you can benchmark it against uh, other things. You could introduce uh, some last few nodes, and then you compare, do A-B testing uh, against Kubo versus Lassie uh, without uh, risking your traffic. You could do that with mirror traffic. That's what we are doing internally for the Project RIA. Um, and finally, when you do that, uh, you will appreciate how much work uh, went into uh, IPFS box or SDK. Uh, the Boxo Gateway Library has uh, not only uh, pretty good uh, logging on different levels, if you enable debug, uh, as I did in my uh, screenshotted demo, you will see what happens for every requested uh, path, how it was translated to what uh, request to the backend. But then, if you work at the scale, that's not enough, um, and you may look into uh, tracing. So. Um, when you start the uh, Bifrost Gateway, 
uh, you get a Prometheus metrics exposed and you can build visualization. This is a, an example of Grafana board build uh, and showing performance of some internals from Box or Gateway library. So actually the same metrics uh, in Kubo and in Bifrost Gateway enable you to, com to use the same boards and tool monitoring tools to compare AV performance um, in between them. But then metrics are not always showing you this, this, the full picture. Sometimes you see the problem and then you want to like zoom in into uh, problems around a specific request and that's where tracing uh, and specifically trace context support uh, com comes handy. So we, uh, in, in, in the main branch of the project, we already support, I believe, uh, trace parent header. If you pass the trace ID with the request, we will uh, enable tracing of that request, and we also forward that uh, header to all the uh, backend services that are used. So if we had to resolve IPNS record, uh, your uh, indexer uh, will get information about that. If you, uh, if you did not have that blocked cached and you had to fetch it from the remote uh, block store, be that Kubol, Lassie, Saturn, um, that uh, HTTP endpoint will get a request with this identifier and that lets you trace the request across services. And that has to start on, on, on the incoming uh, place where you uh, essentially like enable uh, tracing for that request. And then there are multiple exporters supported by uh, Boxol uh, gateway library. If you go to Boxol re uh, repository, there's a, 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 and there's a docs tracing document with details. Probably the most useful one is uh, Jaeger uh, UI, uh, which you can run locally. And then in the top right, you can see I pasted the trace ID from the here. And then I see how long each stage of processing the request took. Uh, the one with uh, red thing is when I made the request to remote system. Uh, when I was making the screenshot, it did not uh, give me visibility into that, but with this tooling, you, you will be able to trace it across systems and see how long local versus delegated tasks took. So I'll be wrapping up, because I feel I'm uh, running out of time, but um, Finally, the self-hosting uh, uh, aspect I wanted to convey with this talk is not about migrating your existing infrastructure, it's more about leveraging the, the same tools um, for personal use. And I would argue that the Bifrost Gateway could act as a user agent, not replacing Kubo, but filling the niche where Kubo could not be run. Namely, there's a huge amount of users that were complaining that they, they would love to use IPFS, but that they are not able to use it on laptop. They are not able to use it on mobile or IoT because running peer-to-peer -peer all the time is too expensive and there was like no linear alternative. And at the same time, they really want to have the integrity guarantee that come with uh, content addressing. Then uh, there are aspects of privacy and resiliency. When it's only HTTP, you can leverage all the tooling that pro provide more privacy and resiliency around that. You could be using, re there could be remote trustless gateway, something that just exposes a single block request um, for a specific CID, nothing more, and you could be using that over Tor. And sure, some, someone can shut down DNS in your country, someone can tweak with uh, BGP rules, uh, but in many cases, you will still be able to browse uh, resources uh, that are on IPFS. Sure, they will be slower, but it, it will work. And finally, in cases where, like education or libraries, um, there's a, a bunch of light uh, terminals which were not able to run full-fledged node. And now in those cases, you, you could have like the, one of the oldest Raspberry Pis, not the current ones, which are like pretty beefy, but the very old, old ones, you could still be running something uh, lean like Bifrost Gateway um, and have verification on the same machine how, where the user agency should happen at the edge. Um, and have only like uh, reduced cost for, for your classroom or library by having a single, maybe like single cache for entire organization. Um, Finally, some uh, KVATS works in progress and future plans. Uh, 
Uh, it's an early preview. We are still working on performance. There are still many hard-coded configuration options. If you, there's something you would like to tweak, let us know, fill an issue. Uh, it's block by block by default. We have a small cache in memory. You can increase it, but we keep it default small so people can run it on uh, low-powered uh, hardware. We are working on experimental car-based graph backend, and uh, that's it. That's all I will say. It will save round trips. You will no longer you will fetch uh, multiple blocks uh, at the same time, but there will be, will be a IPIP in IPFS specs repo about that after we are happy with uh, the results. Um, currently, if you want to use a pool of gateways, you need to use Caboose, uh, but we hope uh, after Project RIA we will be able to like uplift uh, a bunch of generic code uh, to the Bifrost gateway uh, itself, so you will be able to like pass a pool and not have to introduce load balancer right after it to route to multiple gateways. Um, currently, IPNS support, being able to verify signature of IPNS on the Bifrost gateway itself requires Kubo RPC. I mention it here just so people are not surprised, but there's IPIP to add IPNS resolution support to routing v1, which will be provided by uh, IPNI uh, shortly. And finally, Many people who want to run the pub, something like public gateway, or maybe gateway only for their own use, want to uh, have, like having the ability to uh, accept or deny some specific CADs or path. It's a very popular feature, uh, and there is IPIP uh, that uh, we want to support in both Kubo. Probably it will be supported in the box or uh, library level. Um, that's it. I don't know how I, how I look like with time, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Awesome. This is looking really great. Um, who do you see? You gave a couple examples. Um, uh, often when I hear the phrase self-hosting, I also think of like one-click deployment. Uh, I tried to get it running on my phone just now and deploy it, and it failed. I will file, I will file an issue. Uh, but do you have any thoughts on, on uh, what hosts you might want to target to have people easily run this in the cloud? Yeah, it's a very good, good question. I think like the, it's very early. So our current focus is to give uh, people to not spend too much time on uh, reaching uh, a lot of users, but giving the, the the mo the get the biggest bang of our back uh, from the way we are uh, providing uh, Bifrost Gateway uh, to users, and that would be Docker. And um, I think uh, at the end of the day, all, a bunch of like cloud services will uh, we will see something similar. We, in the past, we had uh, Azure One Click deployments for Kubo clusters, uh, for IPFS clusters. I think there's also like IPFS Kubernetes, which was built. Uh, with Kubo nodes and cluster, I think we will see Bifos Gateway uh, trickling down to those places and people using it as, as a component. Uh, but I think like the focus of this project will be to provide a single binary with a very strict set of responsibilities. And then uh, if we are very strict about what this project does and have HTTP on both ends, that makes it very easy to integrate with existing uh, infrastructures. Awesome, thank you. Thank you.